Welcome back guys, I'm Shooting Dave and today we're going to be talking about how to edit a light painted shot. Now I should apologise, I said I'd do this in June but life tends to get in the way. Hopefully this is my apology and you'll take some nice tips and help yourself whilst editing light painted shots in the future. Now, before we jump into this, uh, I have some tips for you. First of all, you're going to need a good tripod. We're taking long exposures here, so you need something sturdy to put that camera on. You want to use manual focus, because you don't want your camera refocusing each time you take a different exposure. You also want to use manual exposure, because you want to control all of this yourself. So basically, as low as ISO you can go, a decent f-stop, so around f8, and your shutter speed, well, that's going to depend on what kind of light source you have. I use a YN300 II from Young Nuo. It's a great little light, it's got these barn doors which allows you to focus the light and to minimise the spill. It also means that I know what colour the, the um, light is that comes out from it. This one has the option of being 5500 Kelvin or 3200 Kelvin. Now that brings us on to the next point, you want to use manual white balance. I set mine to the colour of the light, that way I know that the light hitting the car is going to be pure white. So pro tip one you're going to want to be able to see these images on the back of your camera, right? Well, you don't want to be touching the camera to press play and then scroll through and see the next one because you're going to be micro adjusting that camera and your shots aren't going to align. So what I do is I set the image review, that's how long the image is displayed on the back of your camera for, I set that to hold. That means that image is going to remain there until the next time I take a photograph. That way I can finish the exposure, walk around the back of the camera, check it's okay and then carry on. And tip number two, you're going to want to use a self timer. That means if you do have to touch the camera, you have a little bit of time to get away from the camera, get into position to be able to start your exposure. Now I use an intervalometer, which kind of negates the need for a self timer. I set my camera to bulb mode, plug the remote in, and I can choose any shutter speed I want, whether it's one second or 10 second. It also means I can change the amount of delay time I've got. So if I'm far away from the car and I need 15 seconds to walk to the car, Canon has the option of 2 or 10, so I can dial in how much I need to get into position. It's really, really handy and it means that I don't have to touch the camera at all when I'm shooting because you don't want to readjust your camera and you don't want it to miss a line of shots in post. Now it's always a good idea once you finish your shoot to go back through your camera and have a look to make sure you've covered every area you want. And whilst you're doing this, if you have the ability on your camera, it's a good idea to rate those images. You're going to like what you see on the back of the camera straight away because you've just shot it, you know exactly what you wanted. So it's a good idea to rate those images straight off the bat. That way, when you get into Lightroom, you can speed up your workflow and you can select the photos you want and only use those. So once you've done all that, you want to jump into Lightroom, confirm those ratings, and then you can start making those ed edits. So let's jump straight into Lightroom, and I can walk you through my steps, and then going into Photoshop, I can show you how I build up an image. All right, now we're in Lightroom. This is where you want to confirm that the ratings that you gave each photo on your camera are correct. So basically, you just want to go through, make sure there's nothing junk in there, because you want to minimize the amount of layers you're taking into Photoshop. So you just go through each layer, having a look, making sure that you're absolutely happy with what you've got got on screen and there's nothing that you don't need in there. Now for this car it was a bit of a tricky car so I didn't know which layers I'd need so I took a little more than I thought necessary into Photoshop. So once you've got everything that you're happy with you want to go through and select all of them, come up to the top, you want to go photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now this will load each layer individually into a stack in Photoshop and then we'll take it straight into Photoshop and you'll come up with something like this. We can see down here in the bottom right corner everything stacked up on top of each other. First thing I do here is I select all of the layers and I go up to edit auto align layers and just hit OK. This will take a little bit of time but it will go through and make sure none of those layers uh, misaligned. So no matter how sturdy your tripod is, no matter how little you touch your camera, everything's going to be slightly out by a pixel or two and that can cause some real headaches if you get into the, deep into the edit and you find out that one or two layers are out, you've got to go back through, find out which one is which. So I always do this at the beginning, it just it just stays a bit of a headache really. So we'll just wait for this to, to go through and sort it out, it takes about two minutes. Okay, so once all of your layers have aligned, the first thing you want to do is go through and give each layer a sensible name because you want to be able to find out what it is that you're using that layer for. Um, it's, it takes a little bit of time but honestly later on during the edit this will really speed up your workflow. You'll know, go, oh yeah I need the side or I need the rear or I need the front or I need a nice piece of the wheel. So this way you can find each layer really quickly. 
So I'm gonna call this one side. Now you don't have to be genius with your name. You don't, we're not looking for war and peace here. So again, this is another side, but side is better. So just, oh, side better. Uh, I'd call this one side contrast. You can see how it's a little bit darker. So you wanna go through and label each layer individually. Now, once you've done that, let's assume that you've done all of that. The next thing you wanna do is build up a, a mask for the car. So set every single layer to lighten. Now this is gonna be super bright, way too bright, but at least you can see everything around the car. So you wanna turn off a few layers in here that aren't really causing this. See, this is where you wanna label your layers so you can actually find what you're looking for quickly. Uh, this will be the front and rear wheels, I do believe. Let's try that one. Yeah, there you go. Right, so now you can see the whole thing. Um, what I tend to do is just stick everything into a group and then we're going to create a layer mask. Now, to do this, we're going to use the pen. I like to use the pen tool. It allows me to separate the car and the background so I can work on each one of those individually. It doesn't have to be that way. It might not suit your needs, but for me, it just makes it easier and I like to work in that way. So we want to zoom in as close as you can. I like to go around 400%. So you get nice and tight up onto that car. If you've never used the pen tool before, that's fine. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, but essentially just press P on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool. And then when you click and click again, it will draw a straight line. If you were to click and then drag on the next point and then click again, you get a curve. So what we basically want to do is just draw around the car. So by clicking and then click drag, click drag you can start building up a mask now if you find that whilst you're doing this that the image is still too dark in which case it probably will be in some areas go ahead and shove an exposure layer over the top an exposure and adjustment layer now you can play with things like the uh, gamma contrast so you can actually see deeper into those blacks so you know that you're getting the exact point of the car and you want to take your time with this you want to go through and make sure you covered every area be careful with spoilers uh, or any bumpers that have cutouts on those because you want to make sure you include the cutouts as well otherwise you'll be getting areas where the light won't match up now i've already done all of this i've already cut the car out uh, well given the car its own group using a layer mask and i've already the background sits below that so this is what my PSD for this build of this car looks like. We've got a background group and we've got a layer uh, group for the car with its own mask. And this is what the mask looks like for that car. You can see I've gone around with the pen tool. Once I've completed my selection, I've gone, so we'll just do that quickly. Go around, complete a selection, right click, make selection, and give it about a 0.8 of a pixel blur because nothing is 100% sharp. Once done that, you can then create a new layer mask off of that and there you go now if you're not sure on how to create a layer mask 100% uh, have a look on YouTube there'll be plenty of tutorials for that so I like to build up the background first before working on the car this way it gives me some sort of indication on how the car is going to look um, so I actually used this base exposure here um, for that I was stood over in this corner here holding the light above my head you can see a bit of flare from it up there I was holding the light above my head, just pointing at the car, and I stood still for about 10 seconds. That gives me this lovely spill light on the car, but more importantly, it gives me this nice shadow around the bottom, as well as some caustic reflections here. So that was my chosen layer that I wanted to use for the background. And I just started adding some curves to it, darkening it right down, boosting up around the back of the car a little bit to just ease it off the background. Did a little bit more with some streaks in it. This is the mask for it. Now we don't need to worry about what we're doing to the car here, so I'm only, I'm only affecting the background, so if we, the car looks terrible, and that's fine, because we're gonna be working on the car separately. I added a little bit of uh, red glow, because we had the tail lights on, and there was some spill on the floor, we'll show you that later. Um, but I wanted to just amplify that a little bit, and just make a bigger deal out of it, and just give it some more color. Um, I then added a curve on there, just to bed it in a bit more. There's some tire marks that I really wasn't a fan of, so we clean those up. Now, it's super simple to clean stuff up. Um, you can do it in multiple different ways. You can paint it, which I really don't uh, recommend, which is just getting a sampled color with a paintbrush 
let's just do that quickly. So you just sample some of this colour and then you just start painting over the details. The problem with that is you're not going to match your lighting and it's going to look super fake. So you want to use something like the clone stamp tool, get in nice and close to what it is that you're looking at. So you get right up close, make your brush a bit small and then you just start sampling areas next to the parts that you want to clean up and you can just go through and start cleaning out the horrible details that you don't want in there. Sometimes it's nice to have keep a bit of texture in there, sometimes you just want to get rid of it. You can do it with the clone stamp tool which is S on your keyboard and you hold down Alt or Option and just sample a layer. That brings up this little target, you just sample that layer there and then you just paint in. Or you can use the heel tool. Now I prefer, this is my preferred tool because it kind of, rather than just does a direct copy, it kind of blends it into its surrounding areas which makes it a bit nicer and a bit more effective in my eyes. So you start painting it around here and it just does a nicer job of removing those unwanted artifacts. So that's what I used to, to clean up some of those tire tracks. I left some of them in there. I thought it was quite cool to have a bit of texture in there. And then we basically just added another curved adjustment on the top, really dialing in the contrast. So that's basically there, all there is for the background of this car. For the car itself, I started with the rear of the car. Now this is the base exposure for the rear. You can see it's just illuminated around the rear here. And that was my base layer. That This one's set to normal. Everything else on top of this will be set to lighten. From there, we added in the major side of the car. Um, I think the reason why we actually used uh, the rear for the car is because it actually had clean windscreens because um, this side clean is uh, set to normal but I have a layer mask on here which is actually just masking out this side window and the rear view um, mirror um, that way I get a nice clean window with uh, no streaks if I turn this off you can actually see there's a dirty great big streak through it which I'm just not a fan of we then took another rear exposure and this way we've pretty much got the entire car lit just from two layers a rear and a side um, I thought it was a little too hot so I've added some uh, contrast into the rear of the car here just to help bed it in a bit further have another rear one this is just for the lower diffuser area just to bring out all these lovely diffusers and and body panels that you don't normally see in any other exposures. We have the wheels. These were two separate lights that I used. I, I tend to light each wheel individually and I'll just stand there and wave the light around to give a nice um, reflection on the wheel. And I did the same again for the front. Now, if you're wondering what the wheel exposure looked like, this is one for the front and this is one for the rear. So you can just see that I'm moving the light up and down and then backwards and forwards a little bit just to drive a bit of shape in there and make sure that we pull out the rest of the details. So I had already uh, masked those areas in that I wanted and then flattened them down. So this is basically just the layer it is. It's not using the full pass from it. It's, only, it's using just the areas that I felt necessary. So same as before, just an, a layer set to lighten with a layer mask. And all I've done is I've flattened the two images together and removed the layer mask, or sorry, applied the layer mask. So I actually reused the uh, pass that I used for the shadow. Um, it's the straight shadow. Uh, I just used that again to boost some contrast and some of that metallic paint property into the side of the car. So if I take the layer mask off, you can see it's actually the same layer as it was on the shadow. But I just painted out areas that I didn't like where there's too much bounce down here and all these little pings down here I didn't really want and especially in the, in the side window. I really didn't want that in there at all. I have another layer for adding some more spec. Um, spec is what I call part of the metallic flake of the paint. And this is down for the lower side of the door and again up on the shoulder line. Uh, it's too hot so just add a bit of curves in there just to dial in that contrast and match the rest of the car. After the adding in the extra specular, I wanted to add a bit more bounce light from the side of the car. So there's just a clean pass running down the side of the vehicle. This is what it looked like. This is where I was just trying to light the side of the car. And all I did was just brush it in for the bottom where the light is bouncing up from the ground into the side of the car, just to help match the reflections to the car. Um, it was probably a little bit too hot, so just driving in some contrast in there just to help contrast it. And whilst you're editing, you're always going to want to be looking to see is the layer that I'm adding in there 
matching what the overall feel of the background is. You want to make sure that your car and your background match in some sort of way. You can just have a muted background and a car that pops out and that is some people's style but for me I like to try and incorporate the key light from the background as to be the key light for the car. And then you can fill in the rest of the details of the car using additional layers or different exposures that you shot during the shoot. So moving on to the rear of the car, I still felt it was too hot. Um, it's too bright around here and doesn't really match the tonality of the background here. So I just darkened down the rear a little bit more. Retaining that information, we're not getting rid of any of the reflections, we're just darkening it down. Then I added in a tail light pass. This is what the red glow is on the floor. So I wanted to brush the tail lights in and it gives this nice little red glow into the body panels around the rear. Let's just move in a little bit closer you can see what's going on. So if we move closer in, you can see that this tail light pass is adding some nice glow and bounce to the back of the car. And all I did was just make sure it was brushed in around the areas that I wanted, showing up on the body panels, because I thought the reflections are kind of cool. I also made a copy of that just to boost it further. So instead of being on light, and I do believe this one is set to linear dodge, so we can really start to burn in some of that red from the tail lights. Now it's just using the same exposure, I haven't taken any additional exposures, it's just a matter of duplicating that layer and putting it on top, set to linear dodge instead of lighten. So lighten is only going to brighten what is underneath, linear dodge is going to plus that information over the top, so you're basically doubling up on that kind of intensity. I darkened down the windows, removed some of the hue and saturation out of the windows because the, the cove is like an off-white and it gave it like a weird orangey-green um, uh, tint to the windows and I really wasn't into that. After removing the tint um, I then had a curves adjustment which is just adding some colour adjustments into the vehicle. Um, I tend to like to push the blues a little bit further than they need to be. Um, just add some extra contrast into the image. A bit of colour fill so we're actually deleting the reg plate. Darkening down the top of the car and then I added a bit more tone into the front of the car because if I turn this layer off, you can see, yeah, let's just zoom into it. It's kind of hard to see when you're pulled right out. You can see here it's a bit dusty and a bit grey, so just adding a little bit of tone back into the, into the image with the curves adjustment, just set to colour and just pushing the red um, saturation up a little bit more. And then darkening it down further. And then we had a clean up layer where I just went through and removed a few unwanted reflections and pings out of the car just to help tidy it up. That's pretty much for the car. So you can see from the background to the car. And that's all I did for the car in Photoshop. I added a little flare in there, which is just a soft white brush, just to give it a bit of direction so we can pull it back. And then from there, took it back into Lightroom and I went through and just adjusted some of the sliders to my liking. I gave it a third of a stop extra exposure. I lifted the shadows, lifted the whites, and pulled down the blacks a little bit, just to give it that extra bit of contrast. And then we also put a slight contrast curve in as well, as well as lifting the, the blue point and bringing out some more of uh, the blues in the mid-tones. So this is the final product, and that what is, that's when it, what it was when we left Photoshop. Not bad. So I hope you guys found that useful, um, I wasn't rambling too much and you picked up some small tips. If you have any questions that you'd like to know or any extra steps that you want me to go through, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.